Hey guys, welcome back. It's Omar Sevilla, and today we're going to be measuring brake rotor runout. To measure brake rotor runout, we're going to be using a couple basic hand tools. We got a we got a ratchet, we got our 21 millimeter socket, we got our breaker bar, our torque wrench, uh, and then we have a dial indicator set. So let's look at these a little closer. We have our dial indicator set with the um, locking arm, locking pliers the dial indicator itself, some lug nuts. This is the rotor we're gonna be measuring. We've got a half inch ratchet, half inch breaker bar, excuse me, half inch torque wrench. We've got a pry bar here to hold the rotor from spinning and we have the 21 millimeter socket. The primary tool when we're doing the rotor runout measurement is the dial indicator. And if you look closely at the dial indicator, you're gonna see uh, small lines and those lines represent thousandths of an inch. We know that each line represents one thousandth of an inch because in the center of the dial, it actually shows the graduation number. So here we're looking at the left front wheel hub of the Toyota 4Runner. This is a 2005 Toyota 4Runner. Uh, this wheel hub, you could see there's a little bit of rust buildup on here just from the years of uh, being in service. Uh, we're going to go ahead and measure it with the rust this time um, just to see if we can get a, a measurement on our dial indicator. Um, in, uh, in real practice, we would be cleaning that rust off because we want a clean surface against a clean surface on our rotor. Um, but this time we're going to leave the rust on, measure it, and see what we got. So step one, we're going to set our rotor onto the hub. and start installing lug nuts. Now that we have all of our lug nuts on, we're gonna adjust our torque wrench to 81 foot pounds. All right, and we're gonna lock the handle. We have our 21 millimeter socket and we're gonna uh, tighten these down in a star pattern. Uh, what's going to happen is we're going to get tight enough to where we don't have enough strength to hold this from spinning. So I'm going to use my trusty pry bar to help me hold these in place. And then I can start torquing lug nuts. Once your lug nuts are torqued, um, you can go ahead and you can check your wheel bearing uh, end plate. And these, this uh, vehicle has sealed wheel bearing hubs, so there is no end plate. Everything feels nice and smooth. Um, one of the reasons we don't use an impact wrench when we tighten this down is we want to make sure that rotor is tightened down nice and even. Um, an even better circumstance to what we have here would be to use spacers to evenly distribute the pressure from the lug nuts onto the rotor um, to mimic the wheel. I've even had success bolting the wheel back on and taking this measurement from the inside uh, of the rotor, um, raising the vehicle up and rotating the torqued wheel. The next thing we need to do is we need to mount our locking pliers somewhere near the brake rotor. Um, we don't want to mount it on the backing pl plate because many backing plates are flimsy. Uh, any suspension components that are attached through bushings or tie rod ends could cause some uh, movement and incorrect measurements when we're doing run out. So we want to mount maybe somewhere on the steering knuckle would be, be one of the better areas. Um, uh, if the vehicle had a McPherson strut somewhere on one of the large bolts for the McPherson strut, that would work as well. Um, so we're going to go ahead and there is a sway bar nut here holding it Holding the sway bar to the steering knuckle, we're gonna use this as our mounting point. So I'm gonna adjust these locking pliers. And when we get to the proper tension, I should be able to lock these in place there. Okay, so now those are pretty firm. And now I'm gonna grab uh, the part we call the snake, okay? So this holder here is also referred to as a snake, kinda because it moves like a snake. Um, so it has little segments and those segments are connected through a cable. There's a small cable here you can see. 
Uh, we have this adjustment nut here to tighten and loosen those segments. Um, and then on the other end, it has like a cam mechanism. So when we rotate this lever, it will pull or release the cable that's inside. And this is what helps hold the dial indicator in place. On the end here, there's a small stud that we screw into our locking pliers. We'll do that now. Okay, so now that we have our snake in place, I'll take our dial indicator and put it in the holder here. We always want to preload our dial indicator onto the rotor. Lock that in place. We're going to tighten this collar until we fill it firm up. And then we can rotate our cam and that should lock us in place here. So now our dial indicator is in place here. So that needle's kind of jumping a little bit. Sometimes I find when that happens, it's because we have a rough surface. Um, to fix that, we can try to change the angle of the dial indicator. And that kind of helps us a little bit. Once we have our dial indicator mounted and we're happy with our setup, we can loosen the uh, dial face here and rotate our dial to the zero. Whoops. These can be very finicky. So it does take a little practice setting these up here. There we go. So now we're on the zero. Um, so once our dial indicator is on the zero, we're going to rotate our rotor hundred and excuse me, 360 degrees. And we're going to see how many lines from the zero our needle travels. We're going to go nice and slow. So there's two lines, one back to zero. So if you look closely, I'm keeping my hand on one stud. So this looks like it's about two thousandths of an inch of rotor run out. I'm gonna adjust these here so you can kind of see what I'm looking at. These are just little pointers. Let's try to set this back to, to zero. Okay, so I'll rotate it one more time. It should be somewhere in between those needles there. It is jumping a little bit, but we're not reading the vibrations. We're leading, reading the position of the needle. So if I go slow enough, I can see the actual measurement. And it's right in between my little markers there. So that's rotor run out. So next thing I would do is I would compare that two thousandths of an inch measurement to our specifications. And if it's within specifications, we can send the car away. If it's not within specifications, we can machine or replace the rotor. Um, this measurement should be done when the customer's complaining of symptoms like a vibrating brake pedal when they're coming to a stop or shaking steering wheel when they're coming to a stop. Um, otherwise, rotor run out uh, shouldn't have any other uh, symptoms when you're just driving down the highway. All right, so we just kind of went over real easy how to check the brake rotor run out. Like I said, we'll compare the, the, the measurement to the specifications and then determine if we're going to machine or replace the rotor um, or if we're just going to send it, um, put it back into service as it is. So just one more time, some of the tools I used, 
Um, from from left to right, this is a pry bar that I use just to hold the rotor from spinning. I got a 21 millimeter socket and a torque wrench, and then I got a half inch ratchet that I didn't need on this uh, example. Um, and then we have the locking pliers, the snake slash dial indicator holder, and the dial indicator itself. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, please follow, like, subscribe, Omar Sevilla. Uh, on YouTube. I look forward to your comments and uh, I, I really looking forward to uh, hearing from you guys, letting me know what else you'd like to see. Have a good day. Thanks.